You know what I always thought? A hedgehog that could run at the speed of sound needed? A hoverboard. That's right, in this spin-off game that released in 2006, Sonic and friends are given what's known as Extreme Gear, so they can ride and race their way through all of their problems. Too bad no amount of racing will bring your parents back together. Oh. So Sonic Riders is what happens when you want to take an established franchise and make it more EXTREME. But I must warn you, this game is not for the faint of heart. If you are looking to boot up Sonic Riders and take a trip down memory lane, or you just want to play it for the first time, I highly recommend you do so. But just be aware that this is a much harder game than what you may expect. So let's take a look. That animation was pretty sick, huh? Well, that's the first thing you see when you boot this puppy up. And if that doesn't get you amped to play, I don't know what will. Getting through that beautifully animated opening, players are taken to a menu where you can pick what you want to do in this game. There are normal race modes where you can pick a course and just race different characters. There's a tag mode for you and your friends to race. <laughs> Imagine having IRL friends. And then there's a survival mode, which is kind of like Mario Kart's battle mode. You'll also have access to one of the game's two story modes, that being a hero story, and you need to complete this in order to unlock the second one, which is called the Babylon story. The hero mode revolves around Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles as they witness three mysterious figures skate out of a building window. Sonic gets cucked by these three chads, but as always, Sonic keeps his optimism about him by declaring that this trio is his new competition. New competition! Meanwhile, our favorite bad boy, Dr. Eggman, puts together a race tournament known as X World Grand Prix, where participants must wager one Chaos Emerald to enter. A tournament to see who's the best of the best with extreme gear. Boy, oh boy, I, I sure hope Eggman won't do anything dodgy with all those emeralds lined up within close proximity to one another. That would be bad. We are then introduced to the other contestants and <laughs> wouldn't you know it? These are the same guys from two minutes ago. Whoa! Hey, that's the X World Grand Prix, huh? Let's do this! These characters are known as Storm the Albatross, Wave the Swallow, hey, give me a call, and also Jet the Hawk. After seeing these three enter the race, Sonic finds his motivation and enters too, and we're off to racing, boys! Now the first thing I noticed when I booted up this game and started playing was the game gives you no instructions as to how to actually race. As someone who hasn't played this in 15 odd years, I'm a little rusty. The game will give you some basic indications like circle to boost or I want to drift. And side note, can we make this a little bit bigger? I almost missed it when it's on screen. But everything else is kind of up to you to figure out. There's no tutorial and the game really just expects you to know or fail over and over again until you figure it out. Yes, it's a more grinding <laughs> approach and one that may turn new players off, but it gave me room to experiment and try things to see what did or didn't work. It meant that eventually I sorted myself out and that felt way better than being told everything through a menu. Though they take this a little too far as they leave out crucial information, but more on that later. The objective of this game is to basically either win or place in top three of each race, and their specific race will tell you which one you need to do. And then in between races, you'll have cutscenes that aim to tell you the story. Well, I don't know. Tails tries to, but... According to rumors, this legendary band, the Babylon Rogues, were great thieves. Legend also says that the Babylon Rogues incurred the wrath of the gods because of their crimes and that the island was cast into the depths of the earth. After that, supposedly the Babylonians were then scattered for all time, never to be found. But they say that the Babylon Rogues treasure still remains on that island, which is Stop! The story is understandably not very deep because the game can be completed in as little as one and a half hours for both story modes, which doesn't leave a lot of time or room for a developing story. So back to the comments I made at the start of the video, this game is difficult. It really just throws you in the deep end and you'll quickly learn that everything in this game is insane. The computers or AI that you race against are ruthless and every track that I raced on felt like I needed to achieve a no mistake run. One bump into a wall, one missed grind, one ill-timed boost and you can basically kiss first place goodbye. Once the competitor gets in front of you, there's oftentimes very little things that can be done to gain that distance back. And unlike other racing games, if you fall behind in this game, 
it's quicker just to restart the race and start again. On the flip side to this though, overcoming these difficult bots through precise racing and learning each track in and out is incredibly rewarding. It just depends on how much of a tolerance you have to stick with the game to optimize each of your runs. You are given some tools that, if mastered, can carry you over the line to victory. You have your boost and using this depletes this bar. But wait, what the hell is that bar? Why is it beeping at me? Why is my character getting off their board? This is an air tank that basically fuels your boost. It's small at the start of every race but will grow in capacity with the rings that you collect. At every increment of 30 and 60, the bar will grow. But how do you fill up this bar? Tricks! The more tricks you perform and successfully land, the more rails you grind and the more adventurous you are in your races, the more this bar will fill up. Obviously, the bigger the air tank, the longer your boost, which means you can go faster for longer. And through this tank, I quickly learned the name of the game was not only speed, but doing tricks. Doing tricks, landing them, becomes a necessity if you want to do well here. The game uses the air tank to implement a great risk versus reward system here. If you use too much of this boost, it'll start to flash at you and your rider becomes unstable on their board, letting it drop even further below that and your rider just gets off the board entirely, causing a dramatic drop in speed. So knowing this, you quickly become aware that keeping this bar topped up to a degree is absolutely paramount. The only other way to fill up this bar is to pull into a pit stop, which takes so long and can be quite costly in terms of those precious few seconds. Or the levels will have these kind of moments where you need to spin an analog stick and the bar will refill. There are a surprising amount of things to consider in what looks like a generic racing game on the surface. You also need to take note of the type of character you're playing as too, as this will determine what shortcuts or alternative paths you can take, as well as somewhat dictate how each character controls. There are three types of characters, which are speed, power, and flight. Speed characters can grind on rails, power characters can smash their way through objects to reveal new paths, and flying characters can utilize these boost rings. Each alternative path will fill up your air tank as well as give you a few extra seconds advantage over other characters that went down a normal route. Through the story mode, you don't get a choice in the characters you get to play as, but once you finish the hero mode, you unlock a bunch of tracks and a bunch of playable characters for the other game modes offered in this game. And each character will come with their own unique stats that will change the way how they control compared to other characters. Once you have finished the game, you should have about 16 playable characters. There's also a bunch of extreme gear to unlock and collect and purchase from the store, which again, can change the way certain characters play. But let's move into where this game kind of falls short for me. Now I'm coming at this from someone who may be picking up for the first time or is returning back to it after 15 years. Firstly, there's no difficulty options. The comps in this game feel like sweat. So your only option is to memorize each stage and become a god at them, or you just don't progress at all. There's no build up to a higher skill level or higher techniques. And because the game is so short, it really just feels like you've been dropped in at the end of the game, highest difficulty setting on, and it just expects you to get on board. You will eventually get there, but I can see a lot of people being turned off by this approach. Next, which is kind of feeding into that first point, is the inability to recover from one tiny mistake. If you bump a wall or make one tiny mistake, the game will not forgive you for this. No amount of shortcuts, boost, or precise maneuvers after your blunder will make back those lost seconds. For a racing game, there needs to feel like there's at least a chance of making up lost ground. The game is terribly unbalanced in this way. The computer players are either on your ass the entire time when you're in first, or if you slip up just slightly, they're gone. The only real way to win in this game is to get out in first and stay there for the entire way through. If you're racing with the pack, you're going to get absolutely beaten and you will lose 99% of the time. Next, this goes into what I was saying at the start of the video with there being no tutorial. While the game is fairly straightforward, a few things need to be explained at the very least. For the life of me, I couldn't get my speed characters to grind on rails. I was riding into them, I was jumping on top of them, but the character was just not going on the rail. I had to look up and you have to jump and press jump again to attach to the rail itself. It was the cause of so much frustration. Another example where the game doesn't tell you anything are these turbulent tunnels, otherwise known as slipstreams. Jesus Christ, these became the bane of my existence. They're kind of like these little half pipes mixed with grind rails. And while they are fun to use and can carry you through certain parts of the tracks, I often found myself loathing them. 
If a character has started a slipstream, especially when just landing from a jump, you have zero control as to whether you do or don't use it. As in, you're using it, fuck you if you thought otherwise, too bad. Or so I thought. When I was scripting this video, I saw someone else have the same problem and they said that if you press L1 and R1, you can actually exit the slipstream. Boy, thanks Reddit user from a year ago for telling me this. Sure do wish the game informed me this while I was playing. There were so many times where I got stuck on these things and it drops me off at the most inopportune moments, where basically it just cost me the race. I'd be dropped off right before a turn leading me to hit a wall or off the side of a cliff. It was so frustrating. With the game being so unforgiving with one simple mistake, with no real way to make up lost ground, no tutorials to explain how to do some pretty crucial things, and basically making it near mandatory to memorize each track to completely optimize each run, the game demands quite a lot from its players. And look, I just wanted to play a Sonic game on a hoverboard. I'm not trying to sweat the game, memorize every level just to beat it. I'm just not that into it. If you are prepared to give this game the patience and attention it's asking for, and you love a challenge, God, it's a fun game. It's so fun. Though if you're looking for a bit more of a casual experience, you might need to keep looking. So let me know down below if you've played Sonic Riders, who was your main character, and if you remember the game being this difficult, or is it more of a case of me just being shit? Like the video if you liked the video, sub to the channel for more, and thanks to the coffee supporters on screen now. I'll catch you guys in the next one.